Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, today's lecture will be about one particular kind of symmetry, symmetry in three-dimensional world um, relative to an axis. So symmetry about the axis. Now, we do know um, the symmetry um, about an axis in a two-dimensional world and well, this lecture will be in three-dimensional world. Well, this lecture is part of the advanced mathematics course for um, high school students presented on unizor.com uh, so the video is referenced uh, from this website as well as a very detailed um, notes for this lecture which I do recommend you to read before or after um, uh, watching the lecture just as a textbook if you wish and there are obviously other things on the web page which allow you to basically control your educational process okay uh, what is three-dimensional um, symmetry around the axis? Well, actually it's exactly the same as far as the construction is concerned um, as in two-dimensional world. Let me just remind you, well, if, um, if this board is two-dimensional space, we have a line and we have a point, we would like to construct um, a point which is symmetrical to this relatively to the line. How do we do it? Well, we drop the perpendicular to the line and continue on the same distance. So AO is equal to OA prime and the point A would be um, the image, the symmetrical image of point A relative to to the symmetry line or axis, axis of symmetry S. Now exactly the same thing in three-dimensional world. So let's forget about this board, let's just consider that we are talking about a line in a three-dimensional world. So we have the board as you know one dimension, two dimensions actually, and then we have whatever is on this side of the board and whatever is on that side of the board and the point A is not necessarily exactly on the board but it can hang in the thin air let's say what can we do well we still can drop the perpendicular to the plane uh, to, to, to the line how do we do it well very simply if you have a point and you have a line these two elements define a plane so there is a plane which goes through this line and through this point and within this plane we can drop a perpendicular using the plane geometry right so that's just, we can consider, for instance, this board to be exactly that plane which connects the line and the point. So whatever that board position is, it contains both S, uh, line S and, uh, and point A. And within this plane which connects the line and the point, we drop a perpendicular and continue it on the same distance. So that's basically a construction which is exactly the same as in two-dimensional world. Now, the first thing which is very easy to prove if um, uh, A prime is symmetrical to A relatively to the axis S then A is symmetrical to A prime relative to the same line S. Now how can we prove it? Well, if, if we connect these points again with a straight line it will intersect, uh, it will intersect our axis and obviously since uh, a O is a perpendicular to S. It means O A prime, which is a continuation, is also perpendicular. So the same line actually serves in both cases. And the same distance actually again here and here. So that's why it's a uh, uh, symmetrical. Uh, symmetry is symmetrical <laughs> in some way because symmetrical means as, as A relates to B, B relates to A. So that's basically what it is. So symmetry is symmetrical in this particular um, sense. Okay, now we can view uh, symmetry around the axis in a more, I would say, dyma d dynamic, uh, dynamic view and, and here it is. I would like to propose the view um, uh, onto the symmetry as a 
rotation of the space by 180 degree around this axis. Now, let's just think about what is rotation of the space around the axis. Well, if this is my axis, how can the space be um, rotated around this axis? For instance, I would like to have a point somewhere in space and I would like to rotate it by an angle phi, for instance, okay? How can I do it? Well, the way to rotate the space and a point in this space in particular by a specific angle is the following. First, we draw a plane which is perpendicular to this um, axis and which goes through this point. So, in this particular case, let me do it vertically, it would be easier. So, this is my axis, and this is my point A. So, what I do is the following. First, I have a plane which contains point A and it's perpendicular to uh, axis S. This is invisible part. So it goes from here through the plane, let's call it beta, and A is on that plane. Now, within this plane I would like to, let's say this is point O, I would like to rotate this um, segment OA by angle phi within this plane beta. So let's say I'm going to this way. And this would be my A prime. And this would be my angle phi. So rotating is within the plane which is perpendicular to the axis and goes through my point. Now, within this plane, I can rotate. So, um, another way, well, let's consider this is my axis. This is my point. All right? This is my axis. This is my point. So, the um, plane beta would be actually the plane of this board, right? So, I'm turning the whole board and that would be around this axis. So, every point will retain its plane within which it is rotated. That's what the meaning of this. Now, obviously, if phi is equal to 180 degrees, then this point would be on this side with the same length, right? Since we are rotating this segment, it goes this way. So, basically, it goes into the position which is exactly um, prescribed by um, the relationship of symmetry relative to this axis. So, this rotation is just another view onto symmetry around the axis. So, first, you just don't use any rotation. You just straight drop the perpendicular to the plane and, uh, sorry, to the, to the axis and continue it by the same distance. Another way of uh, uh, looking at this is having this plane which is perpendicular to S and rotating within this plane by 180 degree. And obviously every point during this ro ro rotation would be converted into symmetrical relative to, to the S, wherever this point is. If point is here hanging in the air, then again, uh, my perpendicular plane would be this and I will rotate it to 180 behind the board on the same distance and that would be symmetrical point. All right, now just looking at this rotation we can always say that we can view symmetry as operator if you remember, operator is some kind of a transformation of one object into another within the same set of objects. Now, in this case, our set of objects is a space, three-dimensional space. Our elements are points. Now, if I have a certain axis, uh, a straight line, I can always say 
that transformation of any point of a space into its symmetrical relatively to this axis is a transformation of the entire space, which means this symmetry can be considered an operator, uh, an operator of symmetry. So this operator transforms every point into symmetrical relatively to this axis. I mean, obviously, operator depends on the axis, but that's the only dependency, because operator means I can use it to any point in space to get symmetrical. And this operator obviously is symmetrical because if A is symmetrical to A prime, A prime is symmetrical to, to A. Okay, next. Next is a very important theorem. And it's not obvious, like it's not just one statement proof. The statement is the following. Um, this transformation of symmetry preserves the distance between points. Now, how can we prove it? How can I prove that I will have, if I will have two points, so let me make a slightly better picture. So if I have two points, A and B, but what I will do first, uh, First, I will do one plane, which is perpendicular to my axis, and then another plane, which is perpendicular to my axis. Then I will draw an x axis, all right, let's say uh, gamma and delta. Um, one point would be, let's say, here, and another would be here. Now, they are on two different planes. They are in space, don't forget that. So, um, obviously, the plane which goes through B perpendicular to my um, axis of symmetry is one plane, and uh, if I have another point, um, the plane perpendicular to axis would be a completely different plane. So I'm still uh, interested in, okay, so let's say, I put it a little closer, let's say this is my A, and on the same distance I will have A prime. Now this is B, and on the same distance I will have B prime. Well, actually it's a solid line, and this is a solid line. So what I would like to prove that AB is equal to A prime B prime. Not very obvious statement, right? I mean, we feel that it should be this way, because we are turning the whole space, right? If we just think about, we're just turning the whole space, so the relative position of A and B between themselves, actually, is not um, supposed to change, because since we are changing the whole space, then it's moving together, basically. So whatever the distance between A and B was, we are, uh, we are rotating the whole space by 180 degree. Now B goes into B prime, A goes to A prime, but the distance should be the same. I would like to prove it a little bit more rigorously. Okay, here is how we can do it. Now, these two planes are perpendicular to axis S. One goes through A, another goes through B. So what I will do, I will project point B to, well, let's call it somehow differently. Let's call it C. And that would be projection from B prime. Now, you remember what projection actually is, right? It's just a perpendicular to plane 
uh, delta going from uh, from point B and going from point B prime. So these are two perpendiculars to the same plane, which means they must be parallel. Um, these issues were addressed before when I was talking about planes and, and lines and parallelism and perpendicularity, etc. All right, that's number one. Number two, these are two perpendiculars between two parallel lines. They are distances, actually. Their length is the distance between these two parallel lines. So all perpendiculars between two parallel lines are equal to each other in size. Which means that BC and B prime D prime are lying within the same plane since they are parallel, being perpendicular to the same delta, and these segments are equal. So what is this particular figure which is in the plane it has two parallel sides it's quadrilater quadrilateral with two parallel and equal in length size well parallelogram we should remember that not only parallelogram it's also uh, a rectangle because these angles are 90 degrees it's perpendiculars right perpendicular to the plane which means perpendicular to the line on the plane so this is rectangle B, C, D, B prime is a rectangle and B, B prime is equal to C, D, obviously. Now, what I will do next is I will prove within the plane delta the equality between A, C and A prime, D. This is I will going to prove. AC is equal to A prime D. Now, how can I prove that? Well, again, this is the uh, plane geometry, because um, obviously triangles, let's call it O, triangles um, AOC and DOA prime are congruent. This is equal to this this is equal to this because these are exactly equal parts these are all this is also equal to this this is equal to this now these are equal because they are symmetrical so these are symmetrical between themselves obviously as well C and G the angles are vertical so you have congruence of these triangles and that's why this uh, is equal to that so AC is equal to a prime d. So within the plane delta I have the equality of the distance between the point between two points before and after the symmetrical uh, transformation. Now but I would like to prove that a b is equal to a prime b prime which is a little bit more complex but not much actually let's just um, think about it. A, B is this. And if you consider A, C, B it's a right triangle with A, C as one catetus and B, C another catetus. Now, what is A prime, B prime? It's this. It's part of the triangle A prime D B prime, which has also one catetus being B prime D prime and another being A prime D. But now consider these two triangles. Again, triangle A B C and triangle A prime B prime D. Obviously, they are congruent because this catetus B prime D prime B prime D is equal to this catetus B C, and this one A C 
equal to AG and AG is equal to AC. So two catheters of one triangle are equal to two catheters of another right triangle. So these two triangles are congruent, which means their hypotenuses, which is AB and A prime B prime, are equal to each other. So I'm not saying it's a trivial uh, theorem, but it's relatively easy. All I was doing, I was reducing my a little bit more complicated problem, the distance between A and B, to a little bit easier one when this B is actually replaced with its projection onto the same plane where A is. Now within the plane it's easy and then going back to the original I just, you know, built a couple of um, congruent right triangles. So, the transformation of um, symmetry around the axis preserves the distance between points. As a consequence, it obviously preserves the shape of any triangle, which means any angle also preserved. If you have an angle, you just convert it into a triangle, then you rotate it by 180 degree or symmetrically um, uh, transform into a corresponding another triangle, and um, well, that's it. I mean, triangles will be congruent because every side of one would be preserved as far as its distance is concerned to side of another. So triangles would be congruent uh, by three sides. And therefore the angles are the same. So angles are preserved, distances are preserved, so it's invariant transformation. Symmetry around the axis is an invariant transformation. Well, actually, if you just think about it, if you consider symmetry around the axis as a rotation by 180 degree, which means everything in the space retains their relationship. The re relative position is exactly the same before and after the rotation. And obviously, you can consider that rotation by any angle not, not, not only 180 degrees, which I was explicitly using here actually, but any rotation by any degree around this axis would preserve the, um, the lengths of segments or distance between points and, and angles. So I'm not going to prove it, but you just have to feel that this is just a rotation and rotation is very kind of a static. I don't deform the space, I don't scale it, I don't uh, reduce it in size. I'm just rotating without um, uh, any change in dimensions. All right, next theorem. Next theorem is that my straight line during this transformation of symmetry is transformed into straight line. So again, this sounds like a simple kind of a statement. Uh, well, obviously the symmetrical to line is supposed to be a line, right? Well, it's not that obvious. I mean, maybe the line will, will deform. Instead of straight line, it will be some kind of a curve after you transform every uh, point of this line into its symmetrical counterpart. But let's prove that this is not true. So this is my uh, axis S. This is my line D and somehow we are transforming into line d prime now how can i prove that this is uh, if this is straight line how can i prove that this is straight line well that actually is easy let's just choose three points a b and c so it would be a prime b prime and c prime so every point on this line belongs to the line. I mean, point B belongs to the line which goes through A and C, right? So what I would like to do is, I don't want to assume that this is a straight line. I just assume it may be curved or whatever. So I transform A to A prime, C to C prime, but I will prove right now that any point B taken on this line which goes from A to C would actually have an image lying on the line from A prime to C prime. 
it cannot deviate this point b prime cannot deviate from the line which goes through a prime c prime so a prime and a, a and c and correspondingly a prime and c prime i choose any way I want to, right? That determines my line here and determines my line here. I don't know if this line is an image. And to prove it, I will take any point B on this line. Well, right now I'm just choosing in between, but that's the same thing outside. So any point B would be converted into a point which is lying exactly between A, and a prime and C prime on a straight line. How can I prove it? Well, very easily. In this case, what I can say is AB plus A plus BC equals AC, right? Because this is a straight line. That's how I choose point B in between A and C. Now, if B prime is not on a straight line from A prime to C prime, then a prime b prime plus b prime c prime would be greater than a prime c prime right if b is not on a straight line between a prime if, if b prime is not on a straight line between a prime and c prime then this is supposed to be a true statement however we all know that the symmetry preserves the distance so this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. Which means I must have equality here, not inequality. And to have an equality, <coughs> equality I have to have B prime uh, in between A prime and C prime. And that's basically the almost end of the proof. I mean, if, if I choose B outside, then I will just change the, um, the order of my... Um, of my uh, transformation. I would choose A and B and then C in between it will be exactly the same thing. Alright, so we'll have different uh, like AC plus CB should be equal to A prime C prime plus B prime C prime. Alright, anyway that's the end of this particular proof. So the straight line is transformed into straight line. Okay what else is important? Well, important is a plane, how the plane is transformed by this um, transformation of symmetry. So let's say we have, instead of a line, we have a plane which we would like to symmetrically transform into another plane. I mean, would it be a plane? Let's say this is my plane. If I will symmetrically transform every point on this plane, will it be a plane as a result? Well, the answer is yes. And here's how we do it. I will just choose three points on this plane, A, B, and C, which define the plane completely. Right? Three points have only one and only one plane which goes through them. And I will reflect them here. So it would be uh, A prime, uh, C prime, and B prime. So just take three points out of this. They are reflected into three points here. And now I will draw a plane through these three points. Now. How can I prove that this plane is the image of this? Well, I have to prove that any point which I will get from here, let's say point P, would be reflected to a point which is lying on the same plane. Now, how can I do it? Well, let's do it this way. Let's draw a line which crosses at least two uh, sides of this triangle let's say M and N. Now, the image of N should be somewhere here on B prime, C prime, right? Because the line is, uh, is transformed into line. So N prime must be here somewhere. 
Now m prime must be somewhere here because again uh, every point on the line AC should be transformed into a corresponding point on a prime c prime. It's all based on the previous uh, theorem. When I, I was saying that the straight line is transformed into straight line. And now the whole line m and p must be here as a line again because line is transformed into line. But two points of these lines of, of this line m prime and n prime lie on this plane, right? Because they are lying on this segment and on this segment and segments are within the plane. Which means that any other point on the same line must lie within this plane. And that's the end of the proof. So P prime is supposed to belong to this plane. So the plane which I am just uh, constructed based on three points actually contains all other points uh, transformed using the uh, transformation of uh, symmetry. Okay, that's it. That's my three little theorems which I wanted to prove. Um, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. Um, it will probably give you just another nice uh, picture of uh, how the explanation actually can be provided. And, um, well, that's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.